Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer. I'm Reverend Angela Peverell. We're saying our prayers this morning in the parish of Musselbrook. And as we say our prayers, we acknowledge that this land has been traditionally cared for by the Wanarua and Kamilaroi peoples. And so we pay our respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. Today is the 17th of March in 2022, and it is St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick is remembered as missionary to Ireland and a bishop, and he died in 14, sorry, 461. He was born in Britain and was a child when he was carried off by Irish raiders who took him to Ireland to be a slave. He later fled and was able to return home and was educated and instructed as a priest. He decided that he would dedicate his life to spreading Christianity in those places where he was previously serving as a slave and was sent to Ireland as a missionary bishop. In artwork, he is depicted in bishop's clothes with a clover as an attribute. St. Patrick is the protector of miners and the patron saint of Ireland. His name Patrick is of Latin origin and it means nobleman. St. Patrick's breastplate is a well-known prayer and hymn and I will pray the latter part of that before we begin our morning prayer. Christ shield me today against poison, against burning, against drowning, against wounding, so that there may come to me an abundance of reward. Christ with me, Christ before me, Christ behind me, Christ in me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ on my right, Christ on my left, Christ when I lie down, Christ when I sit down, Christ when I arise, Christ in the heart of every man who thinks of me, Christ in the mouth of everyone who speaks of me, Christ in every eye that sees me, Christ in every ear that hears me. I arise today through a mighty strength, the invocation of the Trinity, through belief in the threeness, through confession of the oneness of the creator of creation. This is the message we have heard from Christ, that God is light in whom there is no darkness at all. Glory to God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Our opening canticle is a song of God's herald. Go up to a high mountain, herald of good tidings to Zion. Lift up your voice with strength, herald of good tidings to Jerusalem. Lift up your voice, fear not. Say to the cities of Judah, behold your God. See the Lord God coming with power, coming to rule with his mighty arm. He brings his reward for the people of God, the recompense of those who are saved. God will feed his flock like a shepherd and gather the lambs in his arms. He will hold them to his breast and gently lead those who are with young. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our psalm this morning is psalm number one. Blessed are they who have not walked in the counsel of the ungodly, nor followed in the way of sinners, nor taken their seat amongst the scornful. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on that law will they ponder day and night. They are like trees planted beside streams of water, that yield their fruit in due season. 
their leaves also shall not wither, and look, whatever they do, it shall prosper. As to the ungodly, it is not so with them. They are like chaff which the wind scatters. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand up at the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord cares for the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Almighty God, who so wonderfully created us in your own image and yet more wonderfully restored us in your Son, Jesus Christ, grant that as he came to share our human nature, so we may be partakers of his divine glory, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Our reading this morning comes from Luke's Gospel, chapter 16, beginning at the 19th verse. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen, who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he had been tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus to dip the to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime you received your good things, and Lazarus in like manner evil things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. Besides all of this, between you and us a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so. And no one can cross from there to us. He said, Then, Father, I beg you to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may warn them, so that they will not also come to this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. He said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. May your word live in us and bear much fruit to your glory. Our canticle is the hymn of the Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and he was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of all people, the light that shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and yet the world knew him not. He came to his own home, and his own people received him not. But to all who received him, who believed on his name, he has given power to become children of God, who were not born of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of a man, but of God. And the world became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. We have beheld his glory, glory of the only Son from the Father. And from his fullness have we received grace upon grace. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. 
for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, give us insight to discern your will for us, to give up what harms us, to seek perfection that we are promised in our Lord Jesus. By prayer and the discipline of Lent, may we enter into the mystery of Christ's sufferings and by following in his way, come to share in his glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord God, in peace we make our prayers to you. In trust we confirm our faith in you. Help us to set our faces steadfastly to where you would have us go. By your grace, empower us to reject sin. Fill us with your spirit and remind us that we are a new creation in Christ. Listening to the promptings of the spirit, may we re be renewed in holiness that our lives may reflect your glory. And in your mercy, hear our prayer. Look favour on your church, proclaiming, proclaiming your beloved Son to the world. We pray for your blessings on our bishops, Peter, Sonia and Charlie, and all who preach and teach your message of salvation. Guide us through our spiritual and worldly journeys as we seek to do your will. And in your mercy, hear our prayer. Look favour, look with favour on the nations of the world, our nations scarred by hatred, strife and war. We pray for an end to the war in the Ukraine. Drive away division and despair. Establish your just and gentle rule. And we pray that those who are in authority may act justly with honesty and integrity, according only to your will. We pray for our Prime Minister Scott, for our Premier Daniel, and for all who serve in our three levels of government in this country of Australia. And in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord God, that you will look with favour on those in need, distress and suffering. We pray especially for the homeless, for refugees and for all people who are forgotten or expelled everywhere. We pray for those whose lives have been so adversely affected during the extreme weather and especially the floods. Help us to use our gifts and our talents to the greater good of all. Drive away complacency and apathy when we know in our hearts we can and could do more to help and sustain those in need. Mend broken relationships, heal bodies that suffer pain and illness, and strengthen and deliver all whose spirits are troubled. And in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the immortal souls of those who have died recently, and for those whose anniversary of death occurs at about this time. May they share with all your saints in the joy of heaven, where there is neither sorrow nor pain, but life everlasting. We praise you, Lord, for the saints who have inherited the fullness of your kingdom, as you have raised them to imperishable and eternal life. Sustain us in faith by the promise of resurrection. We lift all these prayers to you in confidence and in faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to him be praise and dominion and worship now and for all eternity. Amen. Lord and Heavenly Father, you have brought us safely to this new day. Keep us by your mighty power. Protect us from sin. Guard us from every kind of danger. And in all we do this day, direct us in the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God.
May the God of peace equip us with everything good so that we may do his will. And may he work in us that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory for ever. Amen.